there, it's Mrs. Bayal here. I'm here to talk a little bit about uh, your up and coming year 10 mocks and also what your uh, year 11 uh, year is going to look like. So this is kind of just a plan for the next few months and weeks and um, what you can do and what we can do to help you. And so first of all, you will have received or we will do is um, receive your rag sheets from um, VIP. This is a really useful revision tool for you to be able to um, highlight red, amber, green, how you feel about certain topics. So just as a reminder, and um, there are uh, five themes in GCSE, and this is for French, German and Spanish. Um, so theme one being identity and culture, theme two being school, theme three being holidays and local area, theme four, work and um, kind of future aspirations and theme five is the environment. Obviously theme five is one that we won't have covered yet uh, so I don't want you to stress too much about that but just be aware that it will appear uh, in your mock papers. You will also receive um, vocab booklets that look a little bit like this. Okay, and um, this is obviously a German one, but you'll receive one in French and Spanish as well. So use this alongside your knowledge organisers and to ensure you're familiar with vocabulary from all the topics in your RAG booklets. Okay, so hello, this is Miss Merchant here. Um, so you're also going to need to do some listening and grammar practice at home because you are going to have a listening, pa uh, listening paper to do, which is going to be worth 25% of your overall grade. So very important. The best thing you can do to practice listening activities is by logging into ActiveLearn. So ActiveLearn is the site that we use as teachers every day in your lessons to access the textbook. And we do have student specific logins for you. So I'm gonna go through those details on the final slide a little bit later, but you log in using your, your details and then you can see that there'll be activities set for you by your teachers for you to do as homework tasks. And that is gonna be set for you each week and put in class charts, so you know what you're doing. But then also there is other activities from that we've done in previous years that you can go back on and have a go at yourself as and when you want to as a bit of revision. Remember, listening is generally the hardest exam that people most struggle with in your GCSEs, so make sure we're getting some good practice on it early. Another great thing you can do for listening practice is watching on some TV in the language that you are learning. Netflix, Disney Plus and Prime all have loads of shows available in French, Spanish and German. So a really good habit is to be getting into a series, ideally, or watching some films. And if you just watch one episode or something a week over the next year and a bit, that will really substantially help your listening skills and your, therefore your grade. Okay, so uh, the, of course, your other 25% is the reading paper. Um, obviously, you can ask your teachers for um, mock papers. That's absolutely fine. But um, some of the better things you could use is um, French, German and Spanish news websites. So for German, uh, Tagesschau, for French, Le Monde and um, for Spanish, El País. Again, speak to your teachers if you want more details on that. Um, there is also lots of GCSE pod you could do and also on BBC Bite Size, they have all of the three languages. They've got some really great kind of reading activities, which are self-marking as well. Um, so yeah, so that's a really useful way to kind of practice. Okay, writing practice. So this is another 25% of your overall grade will be on writing. You will be doing three questions in your test, no matter if you're doing higher or foundation. So to practice for your writing, if you do any listening or reading or speaking practice, that is all going to contribute towards your writing, but you are going to have to do some specific practice at this skill. So the best things you can do is to ask your teacher for writing tasks. We have lots and lots of past paper questions for you to do whenever you want to. And then once whenever you've done them at home, bring them into school or take a photo of them and email it over to your teacher and then we can mark it for you and give you some feedback. And then that feedback is then how you're going to improve your writing going forward so that you have the best skills possible by the time we do our final grades. Also, we're gonna to touch on in a moment for the speaking practice, but you will have you all already have speaking booklets and completing those is again, good practice for your writing as well as it is for your speaking. Okay, so speaking is the uh, last skill for us to look at. And um, alongside the listening is probably one of the slightly trickier ones. It is one that we are going to be assessing fully this time around in your mocks. Um, it's going to be quite different to a lot of your other exams in terms of how it's laid out and done. Um, you will, we will go in 
in your lessons through more detail about how the exam itself is structured. Um, but just to kind of give it a quick run through, you're looking at um, 12 minutes of preparation time with Ms. Kobe, um, where you'll have your role play and your picture based task to prepare for. You then go into um, your class teacher, so it'll be the teacher you normally have in your lesson, who'll do the role play task with you, the picture based task. You'll then deliver your presentation, which is going to be one minute long. Um, and then there'll be a conversation time on that topic and one um, or another ch chosen topic as well by us. Um, in terms of practicing for it, you need to have completed all of your speaking questions for all of the um, themes that you have done. So really for all of you, that's the themes one to four. The only one that should be blank really at this point is um, the environment. What we are going to do for the speaking exam is ensure that you have um, the speaking questions on the environment are taken out to get so make sure you don't have an unfair disadvantage on that one okay but essentially all your um, questions should have been answered for the other topics and um, you're going to make sure you're using at least two tenses per question uh, including lots of connectives it, again your each teacher does something slightly different okay but making sure you're including those kind of gold standard phrases and um, that your teachers I'm sure bang on about all the time uh, you also need to rehearse your presentation. It needs to be one minute long and learn off by heart. If that means reciting it to your dog, to your sister, to the man at the bus stop, so be it. But it does need to be um, absolutely learned off by heart. Um, in terms of practicing, get your parents to ask you the questions from the booklet at random. And particularly the, uh, the questions that are to do with the topic of your presentation. So if you've chosen the world of work, you need to know the questions in the world of work because you know that is a topic you will have. There is absolutely no excuse for not knowing these off by heart. OK, so overall, here are some other useful websites. So you've probably already heard of it. Duolingo, Duolingo, sorry, the app with the little green owl figure on it. It's really good for just doing some quite lighthearted language practice and you can compete against other people. Memorise is something that we've dabbled in and out of as a department. It is being added to your weekly homework list this half term. So you'll be having to log in to memorize, to do vocab practice. Really good there because you can log in and have a go at revisiting the vocab that you've done all the way since the beginning of year nine. And especially since you guys did miss out on some things with the two lockdowns, that's going to be very, very useful for you. Um, for French, German and Spanish, BBC Bite Size has got lots of things. They're quite nice because it's broken into the different skills and themes just like it, we do in lessons. And you can create your own logins there from what I recall. And so you can see where you've got up to last time. Linguascope is another thing we have in our school. So you go on to www.linguascope.com, type in the username and password that on the screen there. And then you select the intermediate or higher level. You're not beginners anymore, I'm afraid. And then you can choose the topics that you want to have a go at. And there's little games you can do. There's gap fields and there are worksheets you can do as well. Then, as I earlier mentioned, you've got PearsonActiveLearn.com, which is the online version of our textbooks in school. And you put in your whole school email address in the username section. And then everybody's password is almost in one with a capital O, where you can log in and do lots of different grammar, vocab, reading and listening activities. OK, so that is everything you can do to revise. Make sure we are starting early. Do not be that person that doesn't start doing any revision until you get into year 11 because you will have so much piled on top of you. It will all become a little bit overwhelming. So let's be clever about it and get started early. If you want any help and any advice on what you can do, which is more tailored towards you as a pupil, just drop your school class teacher an email or talk to us in lesson and we are more than happy to give you some more tailored advice.